Oh my. This is gonna be one of those videos of Dormammu, I've come to get mad at video games. I don't be going around hating people. I don't see the point in wasting my time thinking about others who I don't even care about. Instead, I rather focus all my rage and energy on people that don't even exist. Fire Emblem has given me plenty of that, with so many games, each having its own robust cast of characters, you can imagine there's a handful of them that straight off piss me off. So you know, just because I can be petty as shit sometimes, I'm gonna show you the worst characters in the whole Fire Emblem series. But to be fair, this list is mostly my own personal opinion. I think it's appropriate to say that in reality, this is about my most hated characters. I kinda cheated a bit with the title, but I just want you to keep in mind that if you like any of the characters you'll see in this video, I don't get it, but to each their own. Let's start with the first character that made me feel genuine hate, Severa. A most tragic case because her mother Cordelia is one of my favorite Awakening characters, but Severa... <sighs> She's someone who makes me say, what the fuck is your problem? Yeah, sure, Apocalypse sucks. All the second generation characters go through that, but at the very least they have something that makes them endearing, or in some cases, nothing at all. But Severa is a bit more complicated. I understand her character to some degree. Losing your parents and seeing everyone die is pretty traumatic. She uses harsh words towards others to hide her vulnerable side. She suffers from an inferiority complex due to being compared to her mother all the time, and to be fair, at times, she can have good supports, even in fucking piece of shit fate! Nope, not yet. I still don't get to that section. My problem with Severa is that even though she has great bases to be an amazing character, all of that is destroyed because she is a shitty person. Almost everyone, no matter who she talks to, needs to receive a verbal beatdown or some sort of abuse from her, even if she was completely unprovoked. Ugh, Robin. You think you're so smart because you took the best decision that will keep all of us alive, fucking dumbass. Brady, let's start a society, but oh, you need to pay for everything. Cynthia Nowen, how dare you be yourselves while trying to be positive, you're just some shitty nerds. In other words, she is a tsundere, and how else can I say this? Unless we talk about Mithra, Sinodai Chronicles, or Shion Tales of Arise, tsunderes remain one of my most hated character archetypes ever, and Severa is one of the worst. When I replayed Awakening in 2021, I wanted to give her another chance. And I honestly ended up hating her more. I think she's unsalvageable for me. Astram. This character is obnoxious, which is surprising given how little dialogue he has. I feel they were trying to make another Camus archetype, but without any of the appeal. He's patriotic, but that trait is so excessive to the point it becomes annoying. It also doesn't help that he makes every chapter he's involved in as an enemy way more complicated than it needs to be. I simply don't like this character, at all. And to make matters worse, Blazing Blade has Harken, a character that is literally a carbon copy of Astram, but is way more interesting and has a severe case of depression that, holy shit, get him some help. And well, since I just mentioned Nelibi, might as well pick a character from that continent. Rey. Fucking piece of shit Rey. Combine how awful of a person Severa is, as well as that bocadito de mierda aura I mentioned in the past, and the end result is this kid. To be fair, I can also understand his attitude to some degree. His trauma is reasonable, and again, he can have good supports. The one with his brother Log is really damn good, considering how barren the supports are in that game. But same case as Severa, the negatives are way too many, and when you start to treat everyone like garbage, nope, I'm sorry. That makes it incredibly hard for me to like you. He's also a victim of the Fire Emblem Heroes curse, where he's so common to summon that I've grown tired of seeing his face. Now here's an obscure one, Savior, and this one hurts me a bit. He's in reality a great character despite how simple he is. He's a man who had to endure abuse and betray his country in order to protect civilians and that's admirable. But what makes him so despicable are his recruitment requirements. 
getting him is one of the worst things in the whole series, and I'm dead fucking serious. Long story short, you have to rescue 8 civilians, make them speak with Savior said lieutenants, and once they join your cause, Savior is free for the taking. It sounds easy on paper, but you have to deal with a map that is small and overrun by enemies. The fact that only certain civilians can speak to specific lieutenants, and pray that RNG suit will be in your favor. No matter how much you try, no matter how many hours it takes you, there's just no easy way to achieve that. It sucks because Savior is actually a fantastic unit and one any player would love to have in their army, but his recruit requirements are so inhuman that you just start to hate his existence and realize he's not worth the effort. Easily one of the most tragic cases in the whole series. Next, there's three houses, and to be frank, I honestly struggle hard to find anyone to hate. But no, even the least popular characters like Gilbert or Cyril are enjoyable to me, to some degree. But then I realized, oh shit, the villains suck ass! I don't mean any of the route representatives when they're antagonists, because I know they have their haters. No, I mean those who slither in the dark. Out of the many organizations in Fire Emblem, they are some of the worst, and it sucks, because they have some interesting lore behind them which ties with the game's main conflict. My issue is that you have all the build-up and it amounts to nothing. As soon as the Agarthans start to do something, they just die. Dale, Solon... Cornelia is actually really cool, I love this face. <laughs> Gronia probably got it worse, because she was put in Heroes slightly before Three Houses released. She had an amazing kit, a great art where the artist clearly wasn't hit, and for a time she was a solid free-to-play unit. This led to many people to believe she was gonna be relevant in the story. Then you play the game, she reveals herself, and a few minutes later... <laughs> It's incredibly disappointing, and I genuinely believe that the Agarthans are some of the lamest villains in the series. Literally the coolest part about them is the music from Shambhala. Celica. Oh, I don't need to elaborate much on this, I have a whole video where I give my thoughts on every single protagonist, and as I said there, I want to like her, but I can't. I don't hate her, but her actions were so stupid that she needed to be mentioned in this video. Telius is easily one of my favorite series in the entire franchise. A huge part of that is its characters, where at worst they are inoffensive planks of wood. That is, until you meet Makalov and... <sighs> He is a massive stain in what is overall a near-perfect cast. At first glance, he seems like a chill and carefree man, qualities that should make him likable. But the more you know about him, the worse he becomes. He's abusive and selfish, a chronic gambler that won't hesitate to exploit others for his own gain. And never at any point does he learn his lesson. He shows signs of growth in a few supports, but in Radiant Dawn, he managed to prove he's still the same bomb he was in Path of Radiance. And I think it gets worse when you put Marsha into the equation, because you constantly see her genuinely care for her brother to the point it wears her out. But Makalov still continues to try to squeeze more money out of her. He's so bad, he made Astrid an exponentially worse character in my eyes. I respected her in Path of Radiance because her backstory and motives were honestly relatable to a certain degree. But in Radiant Dawn, she's mostly reduced to Makalov's personal cheerleader and... Why, out of all the Telius cast, did they decide to make her obsessed with Makalov? It's like when a friend of yours gets out of a toxic relationship, only to fall in a worse one sometime later. Ah, <sighs> it's me. I'm that stupid friend. Muspel. Remember what I said in my worst arts video? I can easily say he's the worst OC we've had by far. Yeah, I wasn't exaggerating. I genuinely think Muspel is the worst OC in Heroes and overall one of the shittiest characters in the whole franchise. I already mentioned how horrendous his design is. He tries way too hard to look cool, but in reality looks pathetic. He feels like he belongs to some generic isekai, as you can easily make him pass as anything but a Fire Emblem character. Hey guys, this is my original character, Muspel the Dragagon. He hates Sniffle and loves to listen to 9 inch nails. His personality was carefully designed to make him the most obnoxious and unlikable character ever made. 
He's supposed to be a ruthless and menacing tyrant, but instead ends up acting like an angsty teenager that desperately wants to get some attention. And his voice is the fucking worst. And it's so jarring, he's voiced by the same guy who sings Rules of Nature in Metal Gear Rising. I love that song, but in Heroes, it's like he was ordered to sound as the most irritating person in the world. Squeal, squeal, squeal! <laughs> you know, I was really happy when he died during those Tempest trials. Now here's a very special case of a character I despise with every cell of my body. Barry. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, for those who don't know, he's a character from Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Back in that video, I mentioned that if I had to choose between liking or hating the cast, I would pick the former. However, Barry is the only exception to that. A man whose entire personality can be condensed in being a weebu, throwing tantrums when he doesn't watch anime, and being incredibly obsessed with little girls. The latter is what makes him so awful because it's not even a thing of Oh, I watched this anime because the characters are cute. No, he's really obsessed with the little girls, to the point where it's disgusting to watch. There's even a point where he makes Tiki uncomfortable because that's all he ever talks about. I don't think I need to explain anything further than that. Barry should simply die or go to prison. Now, here's the fun part about the video. I wanted to mention at least one character I hate from each game. But while trying to do so, I realized that I can't, because there are games where I don't hate any of the characters, like in Secret Stones or Blazing Blade. Even characters you saw in this video, like Xavier or the Agarthans, I can't exactly say I hate them, but I still wanted to mention them because they left me a negative impact. I think there's a difference between disliking and hating. And to be fair, it's very hard for me to say that I really hate something. And I don't want to force that emotion just to be funny, because that's not who I am. However, that is no issue when it comes to Fire Emblem Fates, and who am I kidding? Even before starting this video, I knew most of it was gonna be Fates. I can give you so many reasons as to why I hate those games as much as I do, but for now, let's just focus on the characters. Where do I start? Setsuna. One of my biggest disappointments with the game. I love her design, I thought she was gonna be very likable. But her entire personality revolves around Ooh, I feel in a trap. Oh, I feel in another trap. Sorry, I'm too busy being in a trap. That's literally all she has going on for her. That joke burns out incredibly fast. And her voice irritates me. Nothing against her voice actress, I think she is very talented, as evidenced by Katria. But it's like for Fates, she was told to sound as high and stupid as possible. I popped out of a divine weapon? <laughs> Always wanted to do that. Hinata and Hana. They bore the shit out of me. Hinata is so generic, so unremarkable, so... There. If that was all, that would be the end of it. But I ended up hating him because, you guessed it, he's incredibly easy to summon in heroes. It also doesn't help that he was drawn by that awful artist Ueda Yumehito. That's a face that fills me with rage every time I see it. Hana is almost the same as Chris from New Mystery. Her whole personality can be defined as Sakura and training. She's such a snoozefest. Mosu. This pick is 100% personal hatred. I have beef against her because when I first recruited her in Fates and saw the aptitude skill, I was expecting something similar to Titanium Ball's tunnel. I tried. I tried my best to make Mosu somewhat usable, but she just refused to do anything. Then comes the horrendous chapter where Takumi attacks you on the port. It took me literal hours, so much blood and sweat to finally get close to finish it. Then comes Mosu on the final turn, on the final enemy, and she missed a 93% hit, costing her her life and costing me the whole map. That's when I exploded internally, making me develop a personal vendetta against this bunch of pixels. I literally made a post about it on social media because I was that pissed off. Five years later, and I'm still not calm. When it comes to fates, I can be immensely petty, and I'm aware of that. Niles. Please hear me out before you try to get my IP address. He's unique because there are times where I love him and times I hate him. 
I can deny that he has a decent backstory and some of his supports are honestly entertaining. His personality is what has me mixed because Niles gets a lot of pleasure from making others suffer. There are times where he is just a tease, which is fine, but in other occasions he is simply a fucking asshole. That part of him is what has me going back and forth, whether I like him or not. The only genuine reason I have to hate him isn't even his fault, funny enough. Niles is yet another victim of the hero's curse. I hate this art, it pisses me off every time I see it. I said this before, but the artist Jura has a special talent to draw the most punchable faces in the world. And Niles had it worst. Hayato. It's like the developer said, hey, let's make Riken from Awakening once again, but strip him of any appeal or charm. Both characters hate to be treated like childs and want to prove their worth. Riken does this by continuously studying and realizing that everyone grows in their own way, and that in my book makes him cool. Hayato, however, masks his childish nature by being a piece of shit and acting superior to everyone. I tried to give him a few chances, but he was always the same bocadito de mierda. I hate this child. Subaki. I can describe him like this. Couldn't tell if he was the shit or just plain all shit. A similar case to Hayato, where I'm convinced they said, let's try to do Cordelia again, but in the worst way we possibly can. While Cordelia is someone who always does things incredibly well, she's very humble and has depth to her character. Tsubaki, on the other hand, is a man who always tries for perfection, but feels the need to make that his whole personality, while he keeps believing himself to be the hottest shit ever. The only reality here is that he's arrogant and obnoxious. And I hate him. Sigbert. I mean, shitbird. Woo! I won't lie, I know nothing about this guy, I never recruited him in Conquest. But he has all my spite because I lost account of how many times I've summoned him in Heroes, and that's even worse because for years he was a 5 star exclusive, so if he showed up, my pity rate will restart and I'll be stuck with an useless unit. Even after they changed the summoning mechanics so he wouldn't be as annoying, somehow I've still managed to summon him a few times. It's crazy to think that even though I know nothing about Shitbird, he somehow managed to make me hate him. Kana. Rawr! That's Dragon for I love you! Then I proceeded to neglect my own child. Nina. The embodiment of the term Fuyoshi. A woman who creates romantic content of men with men. Now, I want to make clear, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But that's all Nina has going on for her to the point where it's tiring and borderline creepy. Any other trait she might have, like being an incredible spy, goes back to her being obsessed with gay relationships. I gotta say though, it's hilarious and ironic that the only male-male relationship in Fates prevents Nina's existence. Guess that shows that true love does triumph over anything. Reina. For someone who barely has any presence or supports, it's amazing how disgusted I am by this character. Reina is a bloodthirsty woman who is obsessed with death and loves causing it. She relishes on gruesomely murdering her opponents and takes pleasure in their screams of agony. She tries incredibly hard to make it all sound poetic, but I think she just looks ridiculous doing that. It's sad because her design emits a caring and experienced aura, but she was wasted in an incredibly repulsive trait. Asura. Okay, I think I need to explain this one because people have asked me why I hate her. I will admit, part of that is me overblowing that emotion. I've been reflecting on why I feel that way and I think I found the answer. Asura is boring, and I mean boring as shit. She's less exciting than seeing paint dry, and when she does something different she's always, always singing the same fucking song. You are the ocean's great waves. She does it so often I ended up hating it. But I think the worst part is that even though she's a nothing character, she's still a device that moves the plot forward, as she will always have the most contrived means to deal with whatever bullshit the game throws at you, effectively eliminating any immersion. And well, I can't deny part of my hatred is because Legendary Asura and Hatari Asura are always a pain in the ass to deal with in Heroes. But if we focus solely on fates, Asura is someone that doesn't strike any appeal to me. After carefully reflecting, I don't think I fully hate her, besides in Heroes. But I still dislike when they make a bunch of nothings bigger than they are and constantly rub it in your face. 
I hate that song! Flora and the Rainbow Sage. Really odd pairing, but alright. I'm mentioning them at the same time because both characters tried really hard to add emotional weight to the story, only for them to become laughingstocks. Flora because... Oh no, I can't believe I betrayed my leash, I'll never find forgiveness. It's okay, Flora, we understand your situation, we forgive you. No, you don't! I'll burn myself alive! Ah! As for the Rainbow Sage... Well, all Huba he ain't, that's for sure. It boils my blood every time I remember that scene from Conquest, where Iago orders you to kill the Sage, and before any impactful decision can be made, he just fucking dies while praising how incredible and perfect Corrin is. I don't think any dead in face has any emotional impact. Maybe except for Scarlet, but I don't know, I still don't play Revelation, I could be wrong. But these two dumbasses easily had the stupidest ones in the whole game. Well, maybe except for the next character. Xander? Well, hold on! Story Xander, specifically. If you're familiar with the community, you might have heard people tend to split Xander into entities. One for his supports, another for the story. The latter is so bad, it's impossible to believe these two are the same person. Xander in his supports is a wise, empathetic big brother with interesting views. Story Xander is the total opposite and is the perfect example of how fate shafts its characters for plot convenience. There's so many things wrong with him, but I think the worst offender is when he accidentally kills Elise, she begs him to stop fighting, but then continues to fight mere seconds after that and then expects you to feel sorry when he dies. Story Sander is a perfect unlikable idiot that deserves what happened to him. Next we have the most disgusting character ever made. Pe Pe Petty. <laughs> Petty is a character that I look at and I say... What the fuck were they thinking? If the barf inducing design didn't give that away, Petty is someone who behaves like a spoiled child, constantly throwing tantrums and violently lashing at anyone who wrongs her. A literal sociopath that won't hesitate to kill anyone, even allies on impulse. She's someone that feels wrong and out of place in the Fire Emblem universe, but also makes everyone around her worse, because you have these characters who always boast about doing the right thing and justice and all that shit, but somehow are okay with having a serial killer as the retainer of the Crown Prince? I cannot comprehend who they were trying to appeal with this character, but there is someone that for me has zero redeeming qualities and disgusts me in every aspect. Jacob, I want to ask any fan of his, why? I mean, what's the appeal? I really don't get it. No matter what angle I take, he's a complete piece of shit. Half of his character is being Corin's personal fuck toy. I keep a kettle handy to brew tea for my master. My Corin. master is the kindest person you could ever imagine. About my master, Corin, but you've never met a finer person. And when he's not busy sucking their toes off, he's being a massive asshole to everyone completely unprovoked. He makes me say the same thing with Severa. What the fuck is your problem? He's someone who starts a conversation with anyone who is not Corin just to make fun of them. He's rude, he's petty, he's rotten. I really don't understand how he can have any fans. He embodies everything I hate about Fates' characters and in general is just an awful person. Fuck this guy. Before we get to the final character, I bet you're thinking, hold on, aren't we missing a pathetic, stupid, incompetent Mary Sue that Game Shelf constantly throws shit at? Yes, yes we are. Everyone present is already aware that Corin is one of my most hated video game characters of all time. But you know, I already sum up my feelings towards them in my protagonist tier list video. And if I were to bring them here, I would only be repeating the exact same thing again. So if you're curious about that, the video is right there, but before you do so, let me finish off with... Camilla. Combine Perry's mental instability, Jacob's obnoxious obsession with Corin, Reyna's disgusting pleasure in murdering others, but had a clingy and possessive nature, and the end result is Camilla. I'll give her some praise at the very least. She has a genuine love for all her family, and sure, while most of it loops sides strongly at Corin because of fucking course, I'll go as far as to say that the Norian siblings have decent support with her. Camilla also has a complex and messed up backstory that explains many aspects of her personality. She can honestly be pretty interesting to analyze. She isn't just a single anime trope, which is saying a lot compared to most of the Fates characters. The problem? 
that still doesn't make me like Camilla, because her negatives far outweigh the positives. I really don't enjoy her possessiveness over others, to the point where she threatens those she loves as long as she can have her way. I especially remember her support with Selena, where she outright tells her she's gonna cut off her legs so she can never leave. That left an awful taste in my mouth. And when her siblings are not involved, her supports are awful or so far at best. Always going back to Corin, 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 or trying to make someone else her property. Her backstory, for as interesting as it is, it's barely touched upon in her supports, and Camilla never shows any signs of learning, growing, or anything. Some can argue that is the point. But I think that's also a breaking point, because if you don't like Camilla at first, you're not gonna like her by the end of it. And you might tell me that Camilla isn't supposed to be a good person. And I know that. I can love characters that are not inherently nice. Take for instance Tharja. She's a bad person, yet she's one of my favorite Awakening characters, but that's because she has more qualities that appeal to me. Camilla doesn't offer much to make me change my mind. This reason is pettier, because it's not exactly Camilla's fault. But you know what always pisses me off? That every time someone criticizes her, her drooling fans will always come to defend her by saying dumb shit like... <sighs> Stupid social justice warrior, you're only triggered because she's sexy and her boobs are big. First of all, if you still use the term social justice warriors in the current year, you're pathetic. Second, do I look I'm scared of gigantic titties? No! Just because the design was done with fan service in mind doesn't mean there aren't more reasons to dislike a character. But at the same time, a sexy design doesn't mean a character is instantly bad. And I will bring up Tharja again, as well as Bayonetta, Poison from Street Fighter, or Samus in her power suit. Camille unfortunately doesn't feel that quota. More than her design being incredibly tryhard, I really don't like her. I will recognize her unique qualities, and I have to admit that after doing some intense research for this video, that I can appreciate her a bit more. But that's still not enough to change my mind. She remains one of my most disliked Fire Emblem characters ever. Let's all continue to get mad at video games. If there's a Fire Emblem character that you really hate, no matter who it is, make sure to drop it in the comments. I'm of the belief that sometimes we need a bit of chaos in our lives. But anyway, thank you so much for your time, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I especially hope you didn't end up hating me after this. Remember that any support to the channel will mean the world to me. Have a wonderful day, and take care! I'll see you next time!